Hello, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast, where it's our take on life, liberty, and the pursuit of gravy, while you, the listener, are invited to come up on the front porch, grab a beverage, and set a spell. We've got a great show lined up for you, as always. But before we begin, let me introduce you to our starting lineup. We've got Magic Man. He's running the Facebook Live and the YouTube stream and manning the chat. So what up, Magic Man? Hey, what's up, everybody? I, of course, be your illustrious host, Biggin, and how about you? Producer Brian is away, and he is, uh, I think, he's on administrative leave, to be honest with you. I caught him with a, a box of Krispy Kreme. Uh, it wasn't pretty. It involved like a, a kite, a nine iron, and a bowling ball. So we just had to give him a break. He's, he's just kind of lost it. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, he's like hunting or hiking or some manly man thing right now. So anyway, he's got the week off. And um, so he's not here with us, but across the way, since the pride of Anderson, South Carolina, but most of you probably know him best as the silver tongue one 2020's honorable mention motorcycle salesman of the year, the inventor of the redneck egg roll. Give it up on old mic number one. It's Mojo. How about you, buddy? Hey guys, it's uh, kind of a, Honored to be back for a minute. So I appreciate you guys inviting me back on. And uh, absolutely. Anyway, appreciate you guys for tuning in. You can find us on the Facebooks at S, uh, Southern Fried Philosophy. You can also find us on the Twitters and Instagram at SFP Radio. Also, wherever you subscribe, proscribe, inscribe to podcast, you can uh, check us out there at Southern Fried Philosophy. Just go there and hit the old little uh, dinger button. Uh, the alarm icon, the subscribe, whatever your podcast aggregate has, you can just go there and um, make sure you subscribe to us. Give us a rating and review. That's the most important thing. I could care less if you subscribe. Just give us a rating and review. That's how we move up the old podcast algorithms. And, uh, yeah, just check us out on all the socials, Facebook, Southern Fried Philosophy, or website, southernfriedphilosophy.com. Also, if you have any questions, would like to be a guest, uh, check us out at SFP Radio um, at gmail.com. Absolutely. And also, if you would please ever so nicely, if you're, uh, you know, go to YouTube, type in Southern Pride Philosophy, uh, you'll see our show come up. If you'll just like, you know, subscribe to that thing, tickle it, um, poke it, hug it, do whatever you want to do with it. Yeah, Uh, we would appreciate that. Uh, That'd be great. If you are at home and want to start your own podcast, why don't you shoot producer Brian an email once he's back from admin leave at headlines at sfpradio.com. If you'd like to be a show sponsor, uh, shoot me an email at sfpradio.com. Next week, we have our friend Gwen Traversy. She is with the Lutheran Services Carolina. She was a foster child, and now she is uh, recruiting foster parents. And she's going to tell us her story of being in the foster care system and being um, it, helping recruit foster care parents. We want to say shout out to our listeners from California. Uh, guys, you Californians, I don't know why, but you guys are doing some strong work when we look at our numbers. You guys are pull, pulling it. So we really appreciate that. Thank you, California, for listening to the show. Uh, we still need Alaska. Uh, we're still working on that. Sarah Palin, I need you to get back with me. Come on now. This is this is going on long enough. Uh, but soon we will uh, we'll try to call somebody in Alaska like we did with the Vermont and North Dakota. Things have just happened this week uh, that was not made that possible. So, uh, alas, we'll uh, try to get that done. Hey, uh, right, uh, Go ahead. just – Patreon. I forgot to mention Patreon. So oh, that's right. I know we're taking, yeah, we're taking businesses, you know, personal sponsorships, but if you're, if you're really enjoying the content of the podcast, go to patreon.com forward slash SFP radio. Um, you have the different tiers there. Um, love to have you guys subscribe to that. And um, yeah. Absolutely. Sponsor. Anyway, individuals, businesses, however what you want to do it. Yep. Uh, I'm going to ask you, like I ask you gentlemen every week, I be darn. So we're going to go to Magic Man. Magic Man, I be darn. Ah, doing great. It's a nice day. <laughs> Here's <laughs> the weather the report. Weather again. Here's the weather report. Um, no, doing well. You know, just staying busy with work and uh, helping my wife uh, get her uh, her business off the ground. Uh, nice. So uh, our listeners out there, you'll be hearing more about that here, hopefully very soon. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. It's marketing directly to West Virginians. So that'll be good. 
<laughs> what, what is this business? I'm curious now. Okay. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit. Um, she is, uh, she, she's been doing it for several years, but we just now became official. We are, we're officially, we're incorporated. Um, it, it's, uh, uh, bath products like soaps and bath bombs and bath body butters. And say so yeah, I'd say that five times fast, bath bath body butters. Teeth, you know, just stuff, stuff for your skin and your hair. Um, and it's, uh, the, the company is called crave and, uh, so, like I said, you'll, you'll we'll be hearing more about it uh, once we get the website up, and that should hopefully be happening pretty soon. We're just waiting for the folks that are do our website to get it up, and uh, yeah, good stuff. Nice. Uh, I tell you, if it's called you, Crave sir. and it's got butter in it, I feel like I just want to eat it. And I've seen pictures, and I have some of this soap. Yeah. Uh, and it just looks edible. Like, legitimately, I just want to eat it. It looks delicious. A lot of people, yeah, a lot of people are like, man, that looks good enough to eat. And we said, not if you want to recreate that scene from uh, Christmas Story <laughs> with the <laughs> soap in the mouth. No doubt. <laughs> I guarantee it won't taste very well. <laughs> Mojo, how you been doing? It's been a minute. I'm good. Uh, I would like to tell everyone about Hey Dude sneakers. Okay. Hey, have you heard about these? No, I remember the old Nickelodeon Hey Dude, and I was very, I had a, a crush on one of the actresses. That I'm well, sure that's surprising to everyone. A couple of my customers have told me about this, and uh, it hey has dude. changed uh, my, my life. So these are like the shoes, like they're like, uh, they're like a cross between dad lawn cutting shoes and Crocs. So they're wow. very comfortable. Yeah. Okay. So, hmm. Um, I, I I never spend money on myself. I'm just that is I'm, true. I'm very frugal. You can obviously you can attest to that. So I may have had a couple of too many bourbons when I was on my four day vacation, the first okay. vacation I had in four, you know three years, four years, and uh, so inebriated, inebriated Mojo ordered uh, sober Mojo uh, several of these Hey Dude shoes. Uh-huh. So I just gotta I just gotta tell you that they're, they're butter. I mean, they're just like wearing wearable butter on your feet. I mean, so, butter's a key word today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a couple times we've had that. But yeah, I mean, I check them out. Okay. I, I ordered mine from Amazon, had them in two days. Bam. You know, but uh, also that uh, pollen season. Jesus. I, I, I think mm-hmm. every time I talked about this for the past almost five years now, pollen season. I don't Absolutely. Know you I've been on Claritin 24 7, man. This no stuff's crazy. It has been. Uh, a plague i would say at this point in the south where it's just all over the place and it doesn't stop the the allergies will make you cough cry weep everything there's gnashing eye water yeah i'm sure you've seen the videos of uh the you know someone cutting a tree down and just the the pollen plume that comes uh Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's crazy helicopter flying over the trees and just a huge plume of yeah I don't, I don't, yeah, absolutely. It's been awful. It is not a it's not a good thing here in the South. But hey, every year we decide to do it. I'd rather listen. I'd rather deal with pollen than like I don't know earthquakes in California or That's tornadoes right. in in Kansas. So yeah. or hurricanes in the coast. So I you know I'll take this all day every day. You know, a little allergy. It's, just, no it's miserable though for about two months. Right. And, uh, then it clears up. <laughs> and then yeah. it's hot as Hades. Then yeah. And then you're like, and okay, humid. this is, <laughs> and then probably, you know, around, uh, you know, November, you're like, okay, this is tolerable. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then it hits back again in June or it don't matter. It don't matter. We complain the whole, right. you know, all 12 months we complain. Yeah, so all that, uh, it has been a handle for me. Uh, I, guys, I did something this week that I've never done in my life. Um, I, my wife asked me to cook dinner the other day and, um, I got so dizzy and disoriented and like out of it. She went to go pick up small batch and I had to call the ambulance. I actually called nine one one and I was like, I need you guys to come here. Something's going on. And, um, and so they rushed over everything. They checked me out. Everything was fine. Blood pressure was fine. Sugar was fine. Like I don't have any of that stuff to deal with, but like, I don't know what it could be, but you know, if, if it happens again, call us back. I was like, all right, no, no problem. Um, and then, and then that night, um, I felt a rumbling in the tummy and then, um, and man, I tell you, uh, 
I got sick so fast and so quick. I don't know what happened. Um, it was coming up the upstairs and the downstairs. And as you say, Mojo, you could poop on a screen door and not hit a wire, man, it was, it was bad for about three days. And uh, so evidently I was extremely dehydrated. And so we're dealing with that small batch got sick. My wife got sick. So all three of us are at the house, just not feeling good at all. Daycare. Nope. She's sick. She can't come in. We took her to the doctor, everything else. So, and uh, it came down to just the daycare crud. So not only are we paying you a mortgage uh, payment a month, you also give us a nice handy, uh, you know, daycare crud that we got to deal with. So, I mean, I know you can't help it, but God bless. That was horrible. Three days of just. Sounds everything. like those bidets were working overtime. Man, that was a godsend to put those things in. I'm telling you. Well, don't feel bad. Oh. There's evidently something going around. So I've had yeah. guys, I've had my guys out from work and, yeah. And uh yeah, I've I've had sm- a small bit of stock play in the Emodium AD market. So, yeah. Well, you know, they they I looked on the interwebs and they said don't take Emodium AD, but but last night was the last night. I was like I can't not do this again. So, I popped in Emodium AD, which in fact will stop a radiator leak. Um and buddy, that just cleared that sucker up so quick. It was uh it it's, like colon flex, yeah, it's like colon flex. It's like colon flex. Absolutely. So it was, uh, it was quite a disaster at the house, but uh, we made it through. All right, guys, let's go through the Southern phrase of the week. Let's go to um, it's over yonder. I'm sure you guys have heard that before. Over yonder is a distant direction in any direction. We are in, when you're in the South, you need to ask someone for directions and the phrase over yonder might be their answer. Where is the nearest restaurant? They'll say, oh, it's just over yonder and down the road. Uh, The distance, though, could be emphasized with the addition of the word way, as in way over yonder. So, um, you know, there's your southern phrase of the week. You guys have used that before. It's over yonder. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let me ask you guys this question. Have you guys got stuck? Well, not stuck, but have you been in like the Chick-fil-A line? where um you've got a somebody in front of you pays for your meal mm-hmm. have you had that happen yeah i've had okay. that happen. maybe no, not i haven't had that <laughs> chick-fil-a but maybe some other restaurant yeah well i got stuck in that um early last week or late last week and uh then you feel obligated to pay for the person behind you well you know i was like okay let me go ahead and do that you know n- no big deal my my stuff was like $7 What's the person going to be behind me? So I pull up, <clears throat> I give them the card and they're like, you know, they're like, well, they already paid for you. And I said, okay, well, I'll pay for the person behind me. How much is theirs? Thirty-four fifty. Oh. It's like, oh, I don't, I don't want to be the guy that breaks the, breaks the, the love, but thirty-four fifty. What, what would you guys do? I'm in the dilemma. What do you guys do for that? <laughs> What would Jesus do? No, oh, you got to bring that up. <laughs> yeah. Got to bring that. I mean, you got you got to call you got to call the play off the bench there. I think. Yeah, uh, I'm not saying you're obligated to. You can break it. It's not like it's going to get you know seven years of bad luck or anything like that. But <laughs> you know, it's a feel good moment. It's one of those and you know endorphin, dopamine, adrenaline. Yeah, you, know, you did some good deeds. So. I get it. I've been stuck that way too before, you know, Yeah, keeping the chain going. So Uh, magic man, what would you do there? That's a tough one. Cause yeah, I don't know. I'd I'd probably go ahead and do it. Yeah. Just to to keep the, keep thing, the good thing going. I don't want to, to break that, but you know, that, that does suck when your meal's little. (laughs) And the person, uh, yeah, but I'm sure the person behind you would would greatly appreciate it, especially. But you the never know. Like them has a seven dollar meal. <laughs> yeah, just but just think about it. What if that person that had that thirty four dollar meal was picking up food for like, you know, someone that was passing away in a hospital, you know, and yeah. you got to be a blessing to them. I yeah. mean, that's a. I mean, that's I, only a. That's only a you know, twenty eight dollar difference for a blessing, you know. Yeah. No, I understand. But, but I, I get it though. 
I thought about, well, maybe I just pay for my $7 and just call it a day, mm. you know, like, and there's my $7 yeah. and do that. But then I got to think it too, like, what if they're picking up for, for like the office and then they got to take it back and either a, they're not truthful and they just keep mm. the $34 or yeah. they like, they have to divvy everything back up because everybody's wanting change or whatever. So I don't know. I did. I did. Well, the good thing, the good thing is uh, Karen at the office will most likely have her own separate bag. You know, it's so true. It wouldn't be a combined bill. Yeah, it'd be someone who want exact change back. So mm, okay, I think yeah. you're all right. Yeah. Did Did you do it or did you not? No, I did it. I did it. I felt bad. Yeah, I, I knew. Didn't you, want to break I knew. The chain. I knew you would. It, like you said, yeah. it's twenty eight bucks. But man, I was like, ah, this is one expensive Chick Fil A run. So <laughs> it was kind of rough. Uh, that only happens at Chick Fil A. That never ha- never happens at Popeyes. <laughs> You're right. That's true. <laughs> so maybe that's the key. Just keep going to Popeyes. Yeah, Popeyes or Zaxby's because yeah. they have a pretty good sandwich. Yeah. Did uh, all right. So you've you've kind of listened or at least been privy to the Chicken Madness bracket yeah. that we did, brought to you by Red Hill Brewing. Uh, what did you think? Did you, you've had the KFC sandwich? You've had the Zaxby's sandwich. What What did you think? Um, I. I'm finally glad to see these other chains that have been kind of like KFC is antiquated, man. I mean, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. like KFC is becoming the quickly becoming the captain D's. Like there's an <laughs> underbelly of society that keeps <laughs> KFC in business. Um, like, I mean, how many people do you honestly know they go to KFC? Yeah. Hey, let's go to KFC tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, right. yeah. Um, so it's, I'm glad to see their game step up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, it, hospitality is Axby's and KFC, hundred times better than Popeyes. I mean, you you go to order a, a, a sandwich at Popeyes, and I hope they're you know hope they listen. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you're expecting to throw hands with someone at, at the KFC drive or the uh, uh, Popeyes drive through. Yeah, so that's true. You your know, meal you, comes with the side of attitude. Hundred <laughs> percent. Um, the K- I, I'm kind of partial to KFC. I think they, I think they did a little better than Zaxby's, even though yeah. Zaxby has Zaxby's has the sauce. They do have the sauce. Yep. So yeah, mm-hmm. we we still got to try the church's chicken. They, they well, just came out their own one. There's a church's, and then evidently uh, Burger King has come out with one that's supposed to be amazing as well. So maybe that'll happen for the 2022. We'll get those ones in, and we'll see how those those turn out. I honestly well, can't. I'll probably go a year without eating another chicken sandwich. There was a yeah. lot. I'll, I'll, probably, have, I'll probably I'll probably have one tonight. But um, <laughs> Culper is the Midwest chain that's now infiltrated mm-hmm. our area. Yeah, um, I would like to see them up their chicken game game because right now they have the you know, 1989 BK chicken patty okay. fillet that yeah. So I I'm wasn't aware they, they had a chicken sandwich. They do. Mm-hmm. It's not their heavy hitter. I mean, they're well yeah. known for their burgers and custard, yeah. but. Um, I'd like to see them kind of enter the uh, the chicken game a little bit, but yeah. no Zaxby's. I mean, they you don't expect it Zaxby's. I mean, it's yeah, that's true. Pretty decent food, but yeah, uh, yeah. You said Culver's, Culver's, Culver's. Yeah, yeah. I actually went to one uh, in Kentucky, and um, you don't have to drive all the way there. There's one near oh, you. <laughs> yeah. Well, this was yeah, yeah, this was about seven eight years ago, but um, now they the people that were there they they said you got to go try Culver's. They have this you know bun with butter, butter on butter. it, and yeah, yeah, and and yeah, it was good stuff for sure. Yeah. Culver's Art, is a, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is not for if you're on a cholesterol diet, don't don't go there um, yeah. <laughs> at all, or actually any of the restaurants above mentioned. But um, Culver's is. The good thing about Culpers, man, geez, they're like the Chick Fil A of burgers. I mean, their their staff they is yeah, they're on spot it. on. They're like the you know the Water Burger of Texas, or they're just like pure hospitality. They instill that in all the employees. So, um, yeah. I'm not officially sponsored by them, but I, I personally, I, I will take it. I'll, I'll put a Culpers badge on my truck right now. Um, wow, is it strong? Here where here where I'm wow. at now. I mean, they, they, they rock the world here. So. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan. Also in a surprise twist, uh, steak and shake has a garlic butter burger. That's, that's pretty good. I don't want to be shot though. I mean, there's <laughs> one by the Wally world over here. That's, that's decent. 
And all right. And then here's this too. If you go, cause I've been, you know, I go by and I do the Walmart pickup, uh, the grocery pickup. And then there's a, there's a steak and shake right by there. And then they have a thing now where it's like free f- fries with no purchase necessary. So really? I got, I got small batch in the back. I go through, I get my little, uh, you know, I don't even, I get my groceries. I go through steak and shake. I just say, I like free fries. They say, okay, put the fries in the bag. I'm on my home. I'm throwing some to her. I'm throwing some to me. No purchase necessary. Boom. That is horrible marketing. Horrible. Do, is it, they still have the shoestring fries? Yeah. Yeah. They're perfect for, okay. for small I, batch stands. Yeah. I, I haven't been, I haven't been to steak and shake and since I was escorted out of one in Missouri. <laughs> So it's been a while. Been a hot. I minute. like the seasoning they have too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good stuff. All right. Uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed. I'm watch wearing a Kentucky shirt. Uh, Magic Man mentioned Kentucky. Uh, mm-hmm. Mojo. We know how bad a basketball season that we've had for Duke, Kentucky, North Carolina, the Blue Chippers. But this is how bad it's gotten in Kentucky. The the women of Kentucky of uh, vo- volleyball. They won the national championship in volleyball. Uh, this is the first time that the SEC has ever won volleyball championship. This is the first time Kentucky, obviously, has ever won a national championship in volleyball. Uh, and everybody was so excited <laughs> that, uh, that Kentucky won something that uh, they burned couches down on State Street, which is normally a tradition that we do for basketball or a very big football game. Wow. <laughs> but we're so starved for uh, a win that women's volleyball, we all rallied around it. The Big Blue Nation, my wife and I watched it. We got excited when we won and they burnt couches and there was madness in the streets because of the, the Women's National Volleyball Championship. It's kind of crazy. Go Kate. Um, I wonder, you got to think, the, uh, did you guys memorize any of the position names like the, uh, the setter or the outside hitter? Did, I mean, did, were you guys like pulling for any certain females there? That Well, they, they've got two sisters that are on the team. And so it was kind of okay. good to, to pull for them. Uh, they've got a uh, Libero that is a, as a freshman. So it mm-hmm. was good to, you know, pull for her as well. So, uh, you kind of got to know the names as you as you went along, but it was it was quite interesting. You know, every once in a while in sports, you have that that uh, that fluke. It, it, mm. This is probably the last time you'll ask me to come back on. But, but you know, women's sports can be kind of boring. Uh, like you never see W. Like people get excited about WNBA or anything like that. But like you at women's U.S. soccer, I mean, remember the craze with that when oh, we yeah. were like snapping necks and cashing checks. I mean, mm-hmm. we absolutely, we all knew we were all rallied behind that. So it's, it's good to see Kentucky get behind something other than their, their, their abhorrent basketball team that, you know, no, no one can stand. Um, yeah. But as far as basketball this year, we got definitely men's basketball. We got to put an asterisk by this season. This season was, <laughs> it was off the rails. We'll just play it on COVID. Yeah. A hundred percent. We have to. Actually, we no, we have a new president. We can blame it on Biden. I mean, you got four <laughs> years of blaming Biden. It, it don't matter. It's just it goes with it goes with the with it. So, um, COVID or Biden, yeah, I mean, th- those are acceptable um, blaming areas that we can we can use. Okay. Uh, have you guys ever gotten a song stuck in your head? Yeah, Kelly Clarkson, yeah, yeah. earworm. Yeah. Uh, since you know, small batch has been home. Daniel Tiger. And Sesame mm-hmm. Street have uh, have become earworms in my head. But uh, how do you how do you get rid of these earworms? And remember, Mojo, we talked about this before that the number one song to listen to is the Night Court theme song to get it out of your head. Uh, however, uh, a study a new study has come out saying that one other way that you can get it out is by chewing gum. The University of Reading UK says the best way to treat earworms is to chew gum. Why we get them isn't entirely clear, but one culprit is the brain's auditory cortex, which by chewing the gum can kind of refresh that and get it out of your head. That says that it works 90% of the time. I don't know if we want to try that or not, but uh, next time you get one in your head, maybe chew some gum. They say that some of the biggest earworm songs are Single Ladies by Beyonce, uh, Bad Romance by Lady Gaga, I Want to Hold Your Hand 
by the Beatles and also let it go from, from the movie frozen. Any of those get stuck in your head? No, none of them. <laughs> um, let it go. One, one, one from my uh, oldest, one from my oldest daughter, uh, fruit salad by the wiggles. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Toxic by Britney Spears. Okay. Which is one. also a guilty pleasure song. Mm-hmm. So, and, uh, there's a song by Kelly Clarks. I cannot remember the name of the song now, unfortunately, <laughs> but it, it's one of those things that roll in your head once in a while. So, Magic yeah. Man, any, uh, any earworm songs for you? Good question. I think um, Mbop for me, as you think up. about that, uh, Mbop is yeah. one that dang Daniel Tiger song right now is, is a tough Actually, one. Actually, I had one earlier today. Uh, there was a, that group Lynn with uh, Steal, My, Steal My Sunshine. Hmm. From, gotcha. from like 2000. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, yeah, 20 yeah. years ago. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank so uh, we'll go to, instead of having wacky news, uh, again, we leave that for producer Brian. We are going to go to the old tried and true Dear Mojo, which we haven't done in oh. quite some time. Woo-hoo. So here's some Dear Mojo for us. These are Dear Abby, uh, you know, articles or questions that went into Dear Abby. We're going to read them and then see what Mojo says. And then we'll compare them to what Abby says and go from there. All right. So here's the question. Uh, Dear Abby, I'd like advice on how to handle a problem that crops up from uh, every time my family members invite me out to dinner that they are paying for. Mojo, nice shades, by the way. Um, That's my thinking glasses. (laughs) I feel like this one hits you and me because every time we go out to eat and we, and we have an issue with who pays. So um, we'll see how this There's goes. There's no issue. Well, there's an issue. There's, no, there's never an issue. I hate that issue. Uh, I know the rule of etiquette is to order an item that's the same or less than what the host is ordering, but I am often asked to order first. This means I have no idea what the payer's meal will cost. If it means ordering something on the menu other than I'd would I'd rather have a burger instead of a steak? In that case, should I offer to pay for my own meal? What if they won't hear of taking any money from me? Can I still order the steak since my offer to pay was refused? There is no rules. Um, if someone invites you out to eat, they're obviously wanting your company, right? Right. Um, they also, if someone's anticipating on paying, they have no. They don't care if you are the extra bowl of queso with pico and chips they don't care Ouch. they don't also don't care if yeah they don't care if you order the extra you know whatever they enjoy your company and they also want to pay because it, it's out of love not obligation so you don't have to feel like you have to trim back on whatever you're going to order order the, you know you're not going to order a side quesadilla versus the uh, picadillo <laughs> you're going to order what you, you're going to order what the hell you want i mean okay. and, and you know it's not an obligation it's just they love you all right. Magic Man, what are your thoughts? Wow, I wasn't prepared for this. I yeah. know. I know. But no, yeah. I, uh, I I like what Mojo said. I, I agree. Um, <laughs> you know, a lot of times when someone goes to eat with you it's, or you go to eat with somebody, it's because they want to be with you and you want to be with them. Well, that doesn't sound right, does it? <laughs> you enjoy yeah, each actually, other's that's company. That's date started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, you enjoy each other's company. And yeah. um you know, one of the ways you uh, build relationships is uh, eating good food together. Yeah. And, uh, and plus, it, it the person paying, it may give them some joy knowing that they did something like that for you. Pay for your food. There you go. Going back to the old Chick-fil-A, pay it forward. So this is what yep. Dear Abby says. A way to get around ordering first might be to say, I haven't decided yet. I'd like to hear what they're, what others are ordering. However, if you would be uncomfortable doing that and your host won't let you have a separate check, be a gracious guest and enjoy every bite of your steak dinner. So there you go. I just thought. Yeah, but see, I'm, I'm, I'm bad with decisions on food. You, you're horrible like, at it. Yeah. So if I have to, if I have my mind set on the number six combo mm-hmm. and I hear everyone talk about it, everything that they order sounds more delicious than I, I second guess my, my number six combo. So yeah, just, just do your thing. Just order first. So for, for those of you that like the behind the scenes, this is our exact issue almost every time we go to Fiesta Mexicano. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we, we have It'd the be same, our same issue anywhere. That is yeah. true. All right. Here's the, uh, here's the second one. My husband and I have been married for almost six most blissful years, but recently some fantasies have started to worry me. About six months ago, he told 
He told me he had an attraction to women with amputations. Naturally, I was confused. I didn't even know what the, that was a thing, but I accepted it, even though I thought it was odd. Three months ago, he asked me to do some role-playing where, where we hid my leg under a towel to give the appearance of having a below-the-knee amputation, which he says is his favorite. I didn't like it, but I went ahead with it. But now things are getting to be too much for me. He recently told me that not only he finds amputees attractive, but he wants to be one. What do I do? Signed in weird territory. Y'all. So uh, that's all you mojo. Here's some red flags here. If he buys 1980s, 90s, a kind of Ford line van with no windows. Uh, (laughs) If he's uh, has a weird fetish for uh, making his own custom lampshades. Okay. Um, If he has an affinity for having his own butterfly uh, cicada uh, Mm. aquarium hatchery. Okay. If you all of a sudden starts digging a well. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would, I, I'm going to say this. Yeah, I've been married for 24 years, uh-huh. almost 25. Oh, boy. You, everyone, you kind of want, you want to spice things up every once in a while. Mm-hmm. A but there is kind of a, basil. there is kind of, yeah, there is kind of a, uh, a borderline. Uh, there's a border there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say he's probably 20 miles past that border. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, he, he, he he crossed all the checkpoints. <laughs> he has no passport. He he went he went over the border with a coyote. I mean, he is. And he drove the van to get there. Yeah, a, a van is just free puppies on the side. I do. Mm. Oh, oh! I, I needed that one. I'm sure you. I'm sure you love the guy, but I would probably run. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna say, yeah. Your your advice is run. Uh, you don't want right. to end up. You don't want to end up in a tub full of ice in Tijuana, Mexico, sure. with, a, with with a limb missing. I mean, I'm just Absolutely. no personal experience. I'm just saying. You know. Sure. No, I got you on that one. Uh, this is Dear Abby. The name uh, in in weird tor- dear in weird territory. The name of your husband's fetish is body integrity identity disorder. Name disorder there for a second. Uh, this is important that you learn more about it. And I am recommending that you do some research on the subject. It, you will find more information on the internet. Probably wouldn't Google that. Uh, you should also consult a licensed psychotherapist Yep, to help you decide whether this fetish is something you are prepared to live with or it's time to end your marriage. So that's pretty much sums up run. No, I agree with you. All right. All right. I'm all, uh, I'm all about, Hey, I'm all about letting your, your freak flag fly. Right. Sure. Where it could potential be potentially harmful to your <laughs> your digits or sure. limbs. Yeah, that's yeah. uh yeah. Mm. yeah. Might want to back away. Mm. All right. Last but not least, uh last year my across the street neighbor backed into my car. At least that's what I think what happened. My par was my car was parked illegally on the street and there was a huge dent in it. I called the police. And based on the location of the dent and the neighbor's driveway, the officer determined that the neighbor had backed into it. Furthermore, and this is a good clue, uh, the light blue paint from my car was on the car, on her car's bumper. Well, that's a dead giveaway. Uh, mm-hmm. When the officer went across the street, the neighbor came running out, screaming at him. She was hysterical and belligerent, and she denied it. Eventually, the officer told me that he was even though he was certain that she did it, there was nothing that he could do since it was her word against mine. Uh, I never met this woman before, but she is mean. I often hear her screaming and cussing at her small children. Last week, I arrived at work to discover that my company had hired a new clerk. And I'll give you one guess who it is. I don't think she realizes that I'm her neighbor and I must interact with her often at work. And I've been professional, but chilly towards her. At some point, she's going to see me in my yard and realize that I'm her neighbor. Should I clear the air now or should I pretend it never happened? I'm still angry because she cost me a lot of money. Signed, angry neighbor. Ooh, what do you do? Well, number one, how do you you live someone near someone and not know who your neighbor is or talk to them? That's a good point. That's 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 a good point. You know me, that's against my DNA. I got another point around me. Uh, Um. Well, I mean, you can 
option A is to order one of those uh, delicious edible arrangements, have it delivered <laughs> to your house. You walk over to your said neighbor's house, you know, hit their little ring doorbell with edible arrangement sitting there visually in the camera. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then when they come to the door, you just straight throat punch them. <laughs> just, just bam. Oh, the classic and then when, straight throat punch. Yeah. And then when they call the cops, you're like, I have no clue what happened. <laughs> you, know, you deny it. I mean, you deny they, you know, it. there's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing. Because the edible arrangement covered up the evidence. Sure. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> I think we deal with, the. you know, we've all had that salty person in our life. And um, that is just pure poison and venom number one at the workplace i think that person will probably weed themselves out they will alienate themselves That's a good call. enough very true from uh the workforce that they'll you know ultimately be terminated or uh ostracized enough you know kind of like that i'm not talking to that person where they'll they'll mm-hmm. they'll get the hint and they'll quit i'm still i'm still a big fan even though i'm i'm uh i'm not the best example but you know what would jesus do and i think you'd lead in love and I think uh, as much as you can stomach it, you you tolerate their existence and try to love them to the, their ability because people like that are broken somehow. And uh, you're trying to help find that that brokenness. It's not your sole duty in life, but, you know, you interact with them however you can. And, um, yeah, maybe you can offer them some type of, you know, something there to help maybe make them less salty. So we've gone from love them like Jesus would to throat punch mm-hmm. them. I'm, 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 I mean, yeah, option I A is always on the table. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> uh, Magic man, any thoughts for you? How, how about a topiary of a middle finger? Aimed at their front door? <laughs> okay. A topiary. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's never been used you, before. Yeah. Wherever did you get that topiary arrangements.com? Is that, is that, a, is that a thing? <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Uh, Mojo, how things been for you? I know, like you, you took took a break from the show. Like you had the business. How's the business going? Do you guys you want to promote Blue Collar? Uh, I'm I'm never a, a self promoter, but um, no, we, we we've been doing awesome. We have uh, gone from myself to uh, four or five four or five guys gals who work with me now. So nice. Um, it's been awesome. Been able to ramp up. Um, yeah, just you know, just every day, just uh, grateful for what we do. You know, you have frustrations in everything you do. Um, we're in that second year of uh, growth pains right now. But we we don't have enough space for what we do, so we're trying to accommodate wow. that and, and look at alternatives. And um, yeah, just way too many hours in a week. But it's when you have your career and hobby wrapped up in one, it, it makes it easier. But you know, there's that's what I try to tell people all the time, even even the people that work here, is that um, greatness is greatness never happens in career uh, or monetarily without sacrifice. So um, you have to sacrifice at the beginning to have those uh, comforts and rewards later. Hmm. Um, and that's and that's what we're. I mean, this is not my first time doing this. I mean, we've I've had other businesses and. Um, yeah, you, you have to pay your dues forward for the long term reward, and that's what we're current, I'm currently doing. Um, been very blessed. I mean, our, our family since the last time I've been on, we've we've moved uh, closer to my shop. Um, yeah, we we've been very blessed. I mean, I, I still I'm still li- I'm still having to find underwear and shirts out of boxes, but <laughs> you know, uh, we moved into a house that we've we've looked for for years and. Uh, I have a, I have my own space to put my bourbon collection now. It's probably That's all crappy good. bourbons. Yeah, it's no, probably all crappy bourbons, good. but um, looking forward to the next uh, Biggins Bourbon Trail Tour, uh, no 2021 or 2022, whatever it is. But uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's crazy. I, I have no clue in the last time I was on, but man, it feels like forever. And yeah. uh, and everyone's lives like, you know, like in your in your life with your kid and everything that, I mean, just a week it's so much changes and um, in business, so much can change in one week. And we've experienced the highs and lows of COVID uh, impacting our industry. And I, I mean, man, that'd be, that'd just be a great segment just to talk about the workforce right now with um, uncle Joe handing out, you know, money, like a, like a, uh, a guy who just got the inheritance check from his dead grandmother at a strip club, just passing out cash left and right where people don't want to go to work to, uh, 
you know, supply chains breaking down. Um, you know, I'm in, I, I'm in the motorcycle industry. So if you want a clutch cable for a custom build, yeah, you might, you might want to wait six to eight weeks. Don't, don't wait. The supply chains are broken down. So just, you know, the hurdles that we have to kind of endure that um, maybe weren't present five years ago yeah. um, or present now. So we're just all work, overworking or working through those. And uh, yeah, it's just an interesting time, man. Thanks for asking. <laughs> so. Yeah, no problem. It, it, you know, in, to go back to your house, man, you've got a beautiful house and I'm so grateful and thankful that you, you were able to get that. And I still think it's haunted straight up, but that's just me. I mean, it, it possibly is. I mean, I, I granted in my personal defense, I see about three rooms every day just because <laughs> I literally walk in, I go to the bathroom, take my clothes off, shower, go to bed, get yeah. up and re- you know, rinse and repeat. Sure. Um, <laughs> you know, I, but while we have a second here, while we're kind of being a little personal, um, so uh, about five and a half years ago, or sorry, five years ago, uh, I, I just celebrated my heart transplant anniversary yeah. five years ago um, this past month. And shout out to uh, my donor's mother, Lisa. Um, hopefully you're watching. She's in Colorado right now. Oh wow! Um, probably par- probably partaking in, in legal uh, devil's lettuce. I actually I don't know. I'm speculating. Um, anyway, uh, so five years, a little over five years ago, I was released from the hospital, and um, my uh, the host here, um, Biggin, bought me a pizza. My wife and I had maybe ten dollars in our account at the time, and uh, trying to figure out how we're going to feed our family. My my BFF. Um, uh, here um, bought us a pizza from our favorite pizza joint and he paid it forward. And to this day uh, that inspires me, uh, man, I'm about to damn cry here on, on the show. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to try not to, but that today, and anytime I get the opportunity to pay it forward, if, if it's in a line or thinking ahead, um, I always think back to that pizza that my buddy brought me, and um, it fed my family that night. You just, you just never know. Um, we were not that type of people that would have a handout and uh, expecting people to quote unquote bless us. Um, but he met a need that night that I, I, I would commit legal acts in behalf of him if he asked just because he has my unwavering loyalty and it was over a damn pizza from uh the best pizza joint in concord north carolina rosario's i gotta give them a shout out yeah, but no. um yeah so good stuff yeah anyway so hey pay it for chick-fil-a line starbucks yeah. i actually don't go to starbucks starbucks is too expensive you might have a, a 1200 hundred dollar tab with four <laughs> coffees but uh chick-fil-a is a good option well I, i'll remember as well and and i don't know if you remember or you could remember, but I also remember there were other folks that, um, that package spent a couple hours patch packaging meals for you guys. So we could throw them in the freezer for you guys. So it was, um, you know, we, we, I don't know if they were any good or not, but they were supposed to be easy bake, you know, easy cook or whatever, but there were, we made sure that you guys were taken care of for, for a while. Nah. And it's, it's because of love. And, and I think you're right. You know, it's, it's paying it forward, but, also realizing how much you're blessed, uh, you know, just calling the ambulance this week, it was just, wow. It was, you know, I never thought I'd do that. Um, but it, it does change perspective and, and things definitely aren't there. And another thing I've been doing this week is every, every time somebody crosses my mind, just try to text, text them and just say, Hey, just thinking about you. Just, just know that you're loved. And, um, so yeah, please do that. Share more love. I mean, good gracious. We need that. Yeah. And uh, I think this is a great opportunity um, for the past. However, we've so many people have been on different sides of the fences and we still may be, but um, this is a great time to reach out to those people you may have been disagreeable with and um, try to make those encounters. Um, you don't have to agree on everything, but realizing that um, you're, you're now the ones that are toxic in your life, Get rid of those people, but the ones that actually add benefit to your life, and you may disagree on something. I mean, you could be a Ford guy versus a Chevy, but it, the people that actually add benefit to your life in some way, um, it's it's like like uh, Biggin has said. You know, if I come across your mind, send one of those. Uh, hey, hey, buddy, how you doing? Text. 
And uh, you, you just never know how valuable a message like that can be um, to someone at a certain point in time. If they're coming across your mind, they're obviously coming across your mind for a reason. So absolutely, don't hesitate. Mm-hmm. Well, um, we will go to our guest. Let me go ahead and bring Anthony on. Anthony is from Grill Rescue. And so we'll talk to him uh, as we bring him up. And now our feature presentation. All right. Well, joining us now, uh, Anthony. Oh, boy. This is going to be a tough one. How do you say that last name, buddy? Trakita. Trakita. All right. Uh, He is with Grill Rescue, a uh, company that has created an amazing product. Uh, and as we get into grilling season, I really want to push this product. You know uh, that I've pushed products here on the show before, but by goodness, this one is one that I really enjoy uh, that I, I, we need to get the, the word out. So, Anthony, can you tell us uh, what is Grill Rescue? And I've got my, my Grill Rescue here, and my little pad here. So I, it's not something that I'm just talking about. I actually use this thing uh, quite often. Can you tell us what is Grill Rescue? Yeah, so Grill Rescue is simply put a grill brush, but um, you probably are used to your traditional grill brush. You might have something with wires in it. Uh, A big safety concern, I don't know if if you or a lot of listeners have heard, but the wire bristles can actually break off of those brushes, land on your grill grates. Next time you cook a burger or a steak, the metal bristle can actually get stuck in in the meat that you're cooking. And if you swallow it, you're probably going to be taking a trip to the emergency room. Yeah. Uh, so not not too great. So we've combated that with this product that we call Grill Rescue. Um, and the whole point behind it is it uses steam to clean. So basically, you get your grill really hot. You dump this thing in water, and water plus heat equals steam, and it cleans it that simply. There you go. Absolutely. And what is what is this material made out of? What is this? So it's um, it's very similar to like a Kevlar. Um, the purpose behind it is it's so my partner Scott. He's um, he's actually a firefighter. Um, and Kevlar is what you use in what's called bunker gear, which is the stuff that firefighters wear, um, which is the same material that is in that. So um, the technical term for it is aramid fiber, but you can think of it as pretty much similar to Kevlar. So if I get a bunch of these and I strap them to myself, I, it's going to stop a bullet. Is, is that right? If you if you layered enough of them uh, in front of it, it's, you know, I wouldn't try it. Uh, we, we personally have not tried to shoot ourselves, but uh Theoretically, yes, it could. It actually. Oh, I could. think that's a YouTube video. We need to make that happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, as long as I'm not the dummy, I'm I'm all for it. <laughs> sure. Well, I'll be honest with you. I I never heard of, you know, the steel brushes breaking off, uh, until uh, I was going through you know the Facebook feeds and flipping through, and a friend of mine, he got one. One one of them got stuck in his throat, and then another one got stuck in his stomach, and I didn't realize this was an issue. And then I was eating a hamburger and I looked and I found one in my own hamburger. Oh, no kidding. Well, you got lucky you noticed it. No doubt. And cause I, cause I noticed they had the steel brush and I'm like, mm, I'm going to be very careful with this and move on. So yeah, no, it, it, it's huge. So if you're grilling, please, please, please. Uh, what's the website? Grillrescue.com. You got it. Okay. Go out there and then and, and pick one of these things up. Also, I, I don't know if you know, I don't know if you're a Second Amendment guy or whatnot, but if you need self-protection, this handle right here, good gosh, this is a mighty force. I mean, you could knock somebody on the head with that thing and, and it's heavy. It's heavy duty. Yeah, you'll you'll notice in um in some of our videos, we, you actually see us running it over with the Jeep. Um <laughs> They're showing how strong it really is. So um, it's made out of like a food grade safe polypropylene. So it's like all the similar material that you'll find in all your other spatulas or like plastic cookware. Um, The only difference is ours is not hollow on the inside. That is a solid piece of plastic. Um, You could actually throw that thing right on the grill and it'll take a long time for it to burn. So everything we do is super high temp uh, rated. So obviously it's going on a really hot grill. You don't want to have an issue. Yeah. And you and and these like little heads are re, reusable. You could buy these all you want. And in fact, you've you've come out. I mean, Grow Rescue has come out with some really cool stuff. The one that I had doesn't have the scraper, but you've got that. What are the other products that you guys have? Um, so yeah, in addition to the grill brush and the 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 apparel, a lot of people like our funny uh, aprons that we have out there. Um, in addition to all that stuff, we actually last year um, we just launched a product called Beer Buddy. So you might be used to, you know, a Yeti to keep your drinks cold. And there are some other products out there that will keep your beer bottle cold. There's another product out there that will keep your 
your beer can cold, another one if you want your skinny can cold, and so on and so forth. But you would have to buy five or six of these different types of insulators. Um, so Beer Buddy is basically an all-in-one. You can pour liquid in it to keep your drinks cold. You can put a beer bottle in it. You can put a can in it, a skinny can. It holds pretty much any type of beer bottle or can all in one device. So you only need one thing instead of six. That's awesome. Uh, what's next for you guys? Um, so a couple things are, are coming out. Uh, kind of rewind back to the bristle thing. We're actually starting a, um, a petition pretty soon because we want to eliminate metal bristles for good. We're not saying, Excellent. hey, you know, throw yours out and buy our product. Obviously, we would love that. But more importantly, we want to, especially as my partner being a firefighter, we really want to stop seeing people go to the emergency room for what well, seems like such a silly issue, but it is also very real. Um, and until you hear about it or know someone that's happened to, it seems like it's far-fetched and that, you know, the, the classic saying, that'll never happen to me. Right. Um, so we, um, we want to start a petition to see if we can ban these things for good. I know it's a, it's a long shot, but I think that we could definitely make some headway. Um, the company's definitely growing. We're getting a lot of popularity. So I really think that we can at least try to make a dent and if nothing else, raise awareness for, for the issue. In addition to that, as far as you know, new products and whatnot coming out, we're always looking to better ourselves. So pretty soon, I can't give too much detail, but okay. we are coming out with another product in the beverage insulator space. So what I, what I can tell you is that if you have a tumbler already, like a Yeti or you know, one of those other brands, Yeti's most popular, uh, this product will actually work in tandem with that. So you don't actually have to buy too much else to make this thing work. A Yeti for a Yeti. It'll stay cold for nine days. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we can't put Yeti out of business. I own quite a bit of stock in Yeti. Well, no, right this, would actually, this would actually um, help Yeti. Gotcha. Okay, so perfect. They wouldn't be putting them out of business. This, is, this would work in tandem with them. Perfect. Uh, gentlemen, questions, please. Yeah, flat grill safe. Yeah. Yeah. Blackstone, you know, I assume you're talking about grills like that. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Um, what's your personal grill setup? Um, so I, man, I'll tell you what, I run through all kinds of grills and I'm, I'm, I don't have any specific one for me. I do so much research and development with our brushes and everything. I destroy my grills so fast. Um, and I run through all kinds of stuff because we, we want to make sure this product works for everything and we put them to the ultimate test. We're, we're burning our grills over a thousand degrees. We're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So you wouldn't believe the, how nasty my grills get before I have to replace them. So I don't really have a, I can't really have a preference because I've used quite a bit of them. Um, and I, and I run through them way too fast. Uh, yeah, but I'm sure you have a, a Saturday night, uh, games coming on. You have a beer, couple beer buddies out. <laughs> what, what what and you got some nice choice ribeyes what what, what kind of grill yeah, it's, you're it's honestly whatever whatever i have at the moment um right they, now, they haven't burned up i got you yeah yeah it's, it's the it's the current one that i'm using so it's usually one at a time so i'll have one here at my place um my partner has another one at his house so we can we can test on two different ones at the same time with two different people so right now i actually have i don't even know what brand it is but i know it's a six burner it has a uh, a deep fryer on the side um, which I absolutely love. I think it's great. Nice. So I guess who came up with this idea to do this? I mean, cause I'm fascinated by small business. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. So it's a, it's a, a good combination between me and my partner, Scott. So as I mentioned, he's a firefighter um, and these cases, you know, he's heard about them before being an EMT and all that stuff. But I actually, um, I was at my cousin's house and he grabs a pair of tongs and gets his grill really hot grabs a wet cloth and starts rubbing it on his grill. And I see that steam's coming off this thing. And my initial thought is like, okay, that worked way too easily. I'm sure something exists that's better than grabbing tongs and ruining cloths every other day. So I, I got on Google, did some research, and I was blown away that none of this worked. I started thinking, well, that's the same thing that they do when you go to like a hibachi restaurant. They grab a cloth, some water, and like you said, like a flat grill, they clean it the same way. So I was shocked that something like this didn't exist. So I actually made a really horrible prototype using a, a, a handle from another type of grill brush. I manufactured like this piece of wood and then wrapped it in cloth and stuck it all together. And I think actually, if you look at our Kickstarter page, you'll see the original prototype I created. It was, a, you know, really poorly done, but it worked. So that's when Scott, um, he was actually over my house one day 
and I think we were grilling lobster and he saw me clean the grill with this prototype and he asked what it was about. And I showed him the whole thing and probably about a year or two years ago by that he was pressing me like, Hey, we should really do this thing. We should really do this thing. And I had other businesses that I was really invested in at the time. And I'm like, I don't really have the time to do it. Um, but boy, now am I glad that I did. Um, so eventually he convinced me to partner up. He's like, look, I'll, uh, cause he has a lot of experience with manufacturing. So he said, I'll manufacture this thing if you can market it. So that's kind of the beginning of it. Do you prefer uh, charcoal or gas grills? Um, I, you know, I'm really starting to like pellets. Mm. Um, the one I have right now is, is propane. However, um, I think the, the pellets just seem like, I think, I don't know if it's just a laziness thing because I can't Amazon prime, uh, propane to my house, but I can pellet. Yeah. But also the pellets, like a, like the crock pot of cooking, like literally I can go to work <laughs> at six in the morning, throw on something slow temp, yeah. come home. Pull the bone out, man. Point. Yeah, very good point. It's a it's like a man it's like a man crockpot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never thought of it like that. Yeah, don't don't market it. Call me. We'll 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 split that. <laughs> well, I got a question for you. Another question for you. So I have this charcoal grill. It's a char char grill, and it's charcoal, and it has the uh, cast iron grates on it. I have not used this grill in probably three years so you, you can imagine those grates are rustier than yeah a 56 chevy in a junkyard um do you have any recommendations on how to bring those grills the grill back so that way we can use it to cook on again you know rust rust is tough and i i want to be cautious with saying use any type of like rust remover because that'll uh -huh. just destroy the grates themselves i mean honestly i would just buy new grill grates they make okay. them for they make them for every you know yeah. every type of grill. So if they're rusted beyond use that you don't want to put food on it, um, you know, adding water to the mix is probably not going to solve your problem. So I would I would definitely suggest probably just just replace them. They're not super expensive, and uh, you don't really want to be eating rust. Yeah, well, no. plus you end up in the you end up in the ER with like a a, a grill grate shard in your throat. Yeah, now you got a whole that. other problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get get lock shot from the grill. Oh my! <laughs> there are there are products out there though. There are products out there that that claim to work. Um, I'm not going to knock anything, but uh, from what I've used, removing rust off the grill grates, it just doesn't seem right. Yeah, Actually, I think if you probably use your grill brush and reseason it with like some type of fat. Yeah, you absolutely work, could. Yeah. Even even some you know oil. Um, yeah. Will it'll help, but. If they're, I don't know how rusty they are, but the way, how you're defining it, it sounds like it's pretty far gone. I don't, I don't know if I'd try it. It, I mean, it was a fairly new grill back then, three years ago, and I've used it a couple of times, and then we just really haven't had the opportunity since. So it's probably mostly surface rust. I, to be honest yeah. with you, I haven't looked at it in about a year. Yeah, that's so. all it is. You might be able to just scrape it off. It might be yeah. okay. Yeah. The, the question is, why haven't you grilled in three years? That's that's the thing that that isn't that so bad? Can me. Yeah, during COVID, you could be grilling everything out. The, everything. the neighbor, yeah. the neighbor's cat, vegetables, <laughs> everything. Not toilet paper. That was a hot commodity. But. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Speaking of neighbors, if you're grilling at a thousand degrees, what do your neighbors think about about oh, this? Oh, I have no idea. Uh, fortunately, they haven't said anything. Um, <laughs> I, I make sure when I do that, I keep it far away from the house because that's how house fires start. <laughs> and you got to call the ambulance, the fire department. What, 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 what are you using? Nap what are you using? Napalm? Use car tires? I mean, what are you using for? Uh, if, you, if you put if you put some some flammable stuff on those grates and you crank every all six burners, that thing will get hot. I promise you. Sure. I'm a small business guy myself. So what 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 are some encouraging advice, um, input, uh, lessons you've learned, um, mistakes you would try to avoid? Any encouragement you can give to any other? Small business people you out there know, looking the biggest, to start up. The biggest thing I can say is, number one, realize that you don't know everything. Because um, I, I think a lot of people, when they start, they want to pretend that there's something they're not, um, which is easy to fall into. The, the second thing is know that you are going to fall on your face a hundred times before something works. This is definitely not the first thing I've invented. It's definitely not the first thing um, that I've tried to do. I have tried so many other products, so many other services before this. Some of them work. Some of them are great and some of them are just an absolute disaster. So it's, it could take 
10 years before you get something right. But if you stick with it, you're, you're almost guaranteed to figure it out. That's kind of what we're hoping for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, um, I appreciate the, and respect the hustle. Like I, I get it. And, um, I think if you are open to, like I said before, asking for advice and really finding someone who is in the position that you want to be in and ask those people, don't ask your friend who's never done a podcast before. Don't ask, you wouldn't ask relationship to advice from a single guy. So I would say find someone who you respect, someone who's already in the position that you want to be in and ask that person for advice because anyone else is just not going to be helpful. Yeah, I think any any uh, small business person who's uh, worth their salt will be able to help someone out that's trying to start up. I mean, yeah, we've all been there before. We know what yeah, it's like. We just want to see someone succeed. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Create their own uh, their own balance, their own future, their own walk. So yeah, it's perfect. Well, uh, Anthony, I reached out to you about a year ago, and we've been trying to set this up, and wanted to wait till after COVID, and then you know everything hit. But uh, Mojo, when we talked about it initially, he you said that you were you would use aluminum foil to clean off your grill. And mm-hmm. so I was like, well, I'm going to try it. You know, I'm just, I'm going to trust my friend and try it. But when I tried it, I was getting aluminum shards everywhere. I was like, well, screw that's this. Probably, that's back. probably because you have a nasty ass, uh, rusty grate. Oh, like, that's probably it. You know, exactly. Magic Man it. does. Yeah. That could be it. <laughs> yeah. So I can, I can speak to the aluminum foil thing. I don't mean to cut you guys off, but, yeah. uh, if, in your, in your case, you would want to scrape that, that, uh, those grates really good before using the foil, because you might have, like he said, rusted grates or, you know, really hard piece of old chicken on there or something that's just shredding it up. <laughs> Got you. All right. Well, I'm going to stick to my grill rescue. How about that? I, I and I probably need that. to buy some new ones. <laughs> yeah. A well, lot of, there's a lot of tricks out there. There's a lot of tricks, the aluminum foil, there's the, the classic onion trick. And they don't not work, um, but I'm, I mean, maybe I'm very biased, but uh, the hassle of cutting a half onion and throwing it out and then doing it again the next day, especially if you're grilling often, it makes sense to just have a quality brush. Yep. One thing I did find on it is I don't want to go too fast because if I go too fast, the steam gets my arm. So I've been careful on that piece. So. Yeah. So we recommend, we recommend like wearing a grill glove of some yeah. sort um, just so that it doesn't happen, but yeah, I mean, you don't have to press super hard. You can take it slow, and it, it gets the job done. I've heard that before. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, Anthony, again, thank you so much for coming on the show. Any other questions, guys? No, nah, just uh, excited nope. to see someone who created their own future. I mean, yeah. you know my passion for small business, so that's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks Got for joining you. us. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, gentlemen, uh, I will be ordering each of us, uh, each of you guys, a grill rescue brush so you guys will have your very own coming coming shortly how about Damn this i just i just carded them i'm gonna I'm well, thanks gonna, i'm gonna send you all one so that way you don't have to oh, oh wow. wow thank well, you thank you i appreciate, appreciate it. that Man, that's better than oprah winfrey <laughs> you get a brush you get a brush <laughs> everybody gets a brush thanks, no, i appreciate that yeah appreciate of course it. feel free to uh to shoot me an email with some uh with some info and i'll get them out to you guys Perfect. All Thank right. you so much. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Anthony. I'll Thank let you know how it works on my rusty grill. <laughs> yeah, please let me know. So take it before and after. <laughs> All right. Have sure a good thing. One. All right. Take care, guys. Thanks, guys. Picture of him in the hospital getting a tetanus shot. This be <laughs> priceless. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I will say, like, I really have enjoyed this this product. It's been, you know, easy to use and stuff. So, and honestly, like, I, the thing that got me was the Facebook posts of seeing people with their x-rays and you could see that little thing in there. And I had oh, yeah. no idea that it was an issue. Yeah. Um, so y'all. I mean, I worked in the restaurant industry for 20 years. I never mm-hmm. had anyone be like, Oh, I mean, yeah. and he's right. The, you know, the hibachi restaurants, the teppanyaki restaurants that do the, uh, you know, grilling, you know, the hibachi style. Yeah. They, they use steam brags. I mean, that's a, a classic trick. And what he's, what he's kind of done is, is, is a better version of that. That's, mm-hmm consumer friendly. So yeah, I'm going to get behind the guy. I I think it's a great product. Yeah, absolutely. Once you get yours, will you just do me a favor and then uh, just wipe your screen, your camera off with it? That'd be great. (laughs) 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 Well, Mojo, it's been good. I know things are busy for you. Um, It's been good to have you back on the show. I miss you. Uh, Thank you for saying those things. 
you're you're never we'll a stranger. A to we'll see a fiesta that Sunday, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, thanks again uh, for coming on, and hopefully you'll be yeah. back. Yeah, uh, anytime. Yep. Yeah. Uh, thanks again for tuning in to the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast. Hey, just remember, next week uh, we've got Gwen Traversy. Uh, again, she is with Lutheran Services Carolina. She's talking about her growing up in the foster care system, getting some behind-the-scenes uh, look of what that's like growing up as a child in that, uh, just the struggles that she's went through, and then now how she's – helping uh, fix the system and helping other foster kids find some love and some, some, some foster care folks that can help them. So she'll be on next week. We're looking forward to having her on the show. And um, Hey guys, don't forget Facebook, Southern Pride Philosophy. Southern Pride Philosophy. Com is our website at Twitter's and Instagram, SFP radio, please, before you end this episode, Make sure you hit the subscribe button on any of the podcast listening posts that you do. Most vital thing. Give us a rating and a review. You're signing off. As always, keep looking up.